Hi, I'm Josh Miss Chokri and welcome to my channel. So before I start this video, I just wanted to say Happy New Year. I know I'm a bit late, but nonetheless, a very Happy New Year to you. I hope you have an amazing 2024. So today's video is going to be a wrap-up video on everything I read in 2023. Gosh, it sounds so strange saying that. Um, yeah, so I read... Um, my goal for 2023 was 40 books, but I only managed to read about 32 and one was a reread. Um, and I absolutely love 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 that book if you're someone who is following me on my socials then you probably know which book i'm talking about um but if you don't don't worry i will be revealing that in a little while so uh yeah like i said it's going to be a wrap-up video with everything that i've read in 2023 so for a few of these books that I did read in 2023, my memory might be a little faded because time has of course passed and they were just some stories that didn't really, um, you know, grasp my attention or just stick with me. Um, so I may need to just double check on what they're actually about. So <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get stuck in. So the first book that I read in 2023 was of course the conclusion to Six Crimson Cranes which is of course The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. Now if you haven't read Six Crimson Cranes and you're a fan of retellings and fantasy um, you need to check it out. Six Crimson Cranes was such a good good read. I absolutely love the protagonist who is Shuri. She is one fierce and very brave brave girl. Um, this is, of course, the retelling of six, seven, seven, six, seven, I don't know, seven, six, six swans, something like that. Um, so I remember watching um, a cartoon a very, very, very long time ago um, where there's a girl and all her brothers turn into um, swans, but in this, this case, cranes. Um, and yeah, she goes uh, to find a, find some sort of, I think she weaves a blanket um, or something for her brothers and yeah, it's basically her trying to break this curse and save her brothers. Now this is of course the follow up for uh, Six Crimson Cranes and like I said, really, really enjoyed it. The story does kind of progress from where it left off and in a really nice way. I feel like Shi Shiori is such an amazing, amazing, amazing character um, for this story. Um, and yeah, she's just she's just someone that kind of stuck in my mind. And of course, you've got Seru, which is the dragon. And then you've got Takan. Oh, I absolutely love Takan, um, which is the love interest. And yeah, she just goes looking for this pearl. Um, so some of it is uh, based underwater, which is quite nice, um, and some of it is on land. Uh, like I said, the world building is really, really nice in this. So yeah, if you have not read it, I would definitely uh, recommend it. Next, I did uh, read The Miracles of the Namiya General Store, which is of course by Kigo Higishano. And this was such a pleasant surprise. I was not... Um, I was not expecting it to be as wholesome as I as it is. It's just a wonderful story. This is an interlinked um, story with all the well interlinked characters, I should say. Um, I actually did buddy read this at the beginning of the year, which was nice. Um, yeah, it's basically about some thieves that break into this store, and it's quite I, yeah, it is magical realism. And yeah, they break into this store and um, then they start receiving letters, um, uh, letters from a different era, which I think is really, really cool. And at the end of it, they, everyone's linked somehow. And I absolutely loved it. I'm not going to spoil it for you too much, but there are some stories that I've really, really enjoyed. Of course, I did tab 
as I went along. So um, yeah, some really, really nice stories. There are some heartwarming stories, some stories that made me really emotional. There are some really, really nice quotes in here. I was generally not expecting this uh, to be a Kigo Higashano because, uh, book because of course if you didn't know then Kigo Higashano is more known for his detective crime books um, some of which I've really enjoyed um, so to jump into this genre was quite interesting um, but yeah nonetheless really enjoyed it if you have not read it please give it a chance it is so nice. Next I read Banana Yoshimoto's Asleep. Um, I don't know what to say about this book. Um, I've just kind of like, on some books I have tabbed them at the back just so I, I remember what they're about. Um, but yeah this is about sleep. Um, I can't really remember much about this book, but I do remember that I liked parts parts of it when I did read it. It's only it's very very short, very short. You could probably read it within a few hours. And there are there are three short stories in here, all regarding with sleep. Um, yeah, I can't really remember much for this um, read. Can't remember if I did enjoy it. I think I should double check it. <laughs> Um, give me a second. Uh, do we have a sleep? Yes, we have a sleep. I think I give it a three and a half stars. So I think that was when I when I give something a three and a half. For me personally, that just means it's a comfortable read, it's an okay read. I didn't hate it, nor did I really enjoy it. It's somewhere in the middle, but not necessarily a book that I would reread in the future. But I'm glad to have read it. Next we have A Malice by Kigo Higashano. Now this is from a different series. Uh, this is a, actually this is book number one from the Kaga series. A uh, whole new detective, whole new story. Same storytelling I want to say. Um, I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed Suspect X and um, Salvation of a Saint. Now if you know me then I absolutely love those two books. They are from the Galileo series and this one is something quite different. So in the Galileo series uh, the detective, I feel like the whole uh, relationship between the detective and his uh, colleagues is very much alive I want to say but in this it seems very flat I feel like the detective in this is very flat and I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I mean the twist was really well it wasn't really good but it was good it was a good Kigo Higashano book it's you know the, the the pattern was there the way he tells his stories but for this, I just, at the end of it, Detective Kaga, he just monologues and he just goes on and on and on and on. And I'm thinking, when is it going to stop? Because it was just ridiculous. And yeah, for that reason, I didn't like it and it was a bit flat. Um, it's not something that, you know, the story didn't really stick in my mind. It's not something that I was excited about. It was quite slow paced. Um, Definitely won't be rereading it, but I'm glad I I'm glad to have read it and start uh, well, well to start this particular series because I know this year I'll be reading more of this series. Next we have Han Kang's The White Book. Now when I first read about this book, when I read the synopsis, I don't know what I was expecting. I was thinking maybe it was like more non-fiction than fiction, and I wasn't expecting the way it was formatted, but in a way, I was glad I picked it up because sometimes in life you just need that kind of, I wouldn't say no, mundane is not the right word, just something more palette cleansing I want to say, you know, to start off your next read. I think this is it and it's just, it's just filled with the most emotional, sometimes wholesome, sometimes, you know, heartbreaking stuff. It's just short little essays I want to say you know like you've got one page would probably look like this 
and then you know sometimes it could go on for two pages uh, but nonetheless they're very very uh, short and they're, like the book suggests it is the white book um, and it's just got everything related to the colour white so you've got snowflake, you've got frost, you've got smirk, you've got so much um, you've got rice cakes and you know some some stories I really of course enjoy because I've tapped them um, but it, there's not a particular story that kind of sticks in my mind apart from this the one where the baby is wrapped up in this white cloth um, can't really remember it but I know it's in here somewhere anyway if you have not read the white book I would suggest to read it it's something very different it's not like poems it's just it's not poems it's just something very different so next I read a series and I read a series very quick um, I am not one for romance I don't really read romance well I never used to read romance a lot so for me to chow down this entire series very quick was well I was you know surprised at myself um, well with myself I should say um, and I was intrigued because I wanted to know more um, so I think this year I definitely will be reading more of this genre um, the series I'm talking about is the Twisted series by um, Anna Huang <laughs> I don't know why I'm giggling <laughs> I have no idea but anyway um so you've got twisted love you've got twisted games you've got twisted um hate and you've got twisted lies uh, but this is the um order which i read it in so i read lies before i read hate and i'm so glad in a way i did because twisted hate is the most unrelatable uh, book no not only just twisted hate but twisted games as well but twisted hate I didn't like it I I just so you've got Jules in here you've got Josh Josh is a doctor and um, Jules is a lawyer and she's had this mix, uh, messed up ex and she, I don't know there, there's too much too much I think there's just too much sex in this and I feel there were some moments that were quite nice but there were some moments that just didn't make sense and I just didn't like their relationship I think it was it was toxic um, to a certain degree and yeah this was my least favourite from the entire series uh, then of course you've got Twisted Lies now this one I gave 5 stars to because I absolutely love 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 this book because um this book is very story centric you don't get to see anything spicy until like 60% of the book which is great for me and I know this defeats the purpose of a romance book and spicy romance books at that but I skipped uh, the smut so the spicy parts I just skipped because I was so so invested with the story I just wanted to get over that and just find out what happens next um so yeah, if you've not read twisted lies please read it it is so good and um, i think i think this book gave me my possibly uh first ever in romance uh book boyfriend so if there is a christian harper out there then i am waiting for him to find me i guess i don't know but yeah uh really really good story um, I love Christian, he's amazing in this, uh, and he's so nice, and I love Stella. Stella is such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, protagonist for this book. Then I read Twisted Games, and this is the most unrelatable book out of the series. I mean, I don't know any princesses. Do you? like it just doesn't make sense like in a, in a normal day to day I wish I wish the author had penned her differently I wish um Bridget was just an ordinary chick you know going to uni or whatever um I hope I, I just wish she was more relatable um despite the fact she needed a bodyguard 
that was a good aspect to it but I just wish she was a bit more normal I could have related to her more um, but yeah she's a princess in this and I had no interest in the whole politics princess thing but I did like the relationship of Bridget and Reese in here that was quite nice then of course uh, we have a twisted love uh, this was an interesting book I think I, I rated this like four and a half stars um you've got Ava and you've got Alex Alex I don't know I didn't I did I didn't like the way they went about making out and stuff it was just very very strong um so I didn't really like that aspect of their relationship but everything else was nice um I like Ava she's a darling um but I love how all of these books in the series all the characters are interlinked and yeah you can basically read these in any order um like i said i read lies before hate and that didn't mess anything up so if you are wondering um to pick up these book definitely do of course remember plus 18 adult content in here um and of course trigger warnings you can of course find on the I think they're probably on Amazon website or you can go to the Anna Wang's website and check them out but nonetheless um, it was a d overall decent series um, not that bad I'm glad I picked it up I'm glad I was brave enough because normally I would shy away from romance and smut and spice and all of that not too sure why but it's just something you know mentally I was like that's not appealing to me uh, but I'm glad I'm glad I picked it up because yes um, I will probably well, this year I definitely will read more of Anna Wang's uh, works uh, because after this I did end up buying her If series and I started buying her Kings of Sin series as well so really looking forward to the reads. So next I read uh, A History of Burning by Janika Oza. Now this is such this is such an interesting interesting read and it's a bit prolong it's a bit it's a bit long it's a bit long um and there's there's so many so many characters in here and you know because this spans through decades um there's so many characters and you know you've just got to try to keep tabs on them all which is which can be a little confusing because sometimes you know when i read it i was like oh who is this person i forgot uh but nonetheless i was keeping tabs with who everyone was by keeping notes i always keep notes uh but anyway this is a book about a uh a boy who goes to who go who's from india he goes to uganda to work uh when he's really little i, I think it's set in the 18 something uh no yeah no is it uh, yeah, it's set from 1898 to 1958. Um, and I think it's also set in current days, I think. Is it? Yeah, I read this a while ago. Uh, no, 1992. Yeah, that's it. But uh, yeah, so uh, basically it's the journey about this, uh, this boy who goes overseas uh, to work to get, to make money for his his family but then realizes he's stuck there he can't really go back and then he's settled in Uganda he makes a life he gets married he has kids and then we basically get to see him um, around his family and like when his kids grow up they have kids and then of course in 1970 is it 1972 the expulsion happened and then we get to see uh, all of that and how they kind of you know not only them but their friends as well that they've made how they coped with it all how they escaped um how they got out of it where they settled and yeah then w where they did settle you know they ended up settling they had to kind of make a new life start life from scratch this i picked up only because i i loved 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 colola hill by nima shah it's um basically about the expulsion um in 1972 and i absolutely loved love love that um, book um, yeah so that book and this book is quite similar so if you liked uh, Kalola Hill then you probably may just enjoy this like it like I said it's quite similar next we have the bandit queens not the bandit queen uh, I was I was putting off for quite a while I bought it and I'm thinking you know what I'll read it I'll read it but I never got around to it and 
um, then. I never got around to it when I anticipated to read it. But anyway, then I just kind of went all out and said, you know what, I've got to read it. Uh, so yeah, it's it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. It is by Barini Shroff. Um, yeah, so this was an interesting book, but it wasn't my favourite. I didn't really enjoy it. It was too heavy on the Bandit Queen. You've got Gita, who's got a marriage, and you, you know she, she and her friend have. I don't know how to explain this book. Um, so basically, uh, Gita, of course, got married, and she is having doubts that her husband uh, preferred her friend over her, but nonetheless he married Gita. And then, you know, they're married, they're living together, and one day he's, her husband just vanishes. He goes out and never comes back. And then everyone in the village, everyone, not everyone in the village, but yeah, I think I would say village kind of thing, uh, but every, all her other friends are um, you know, beginning to think that she's killed her husband um, because she's never re really revealed where he is or if he, she doesn't, e Gita doesn't even know herself if he's still alive but obviously um, everyone thinks that she she's killed him um, because he's nowhere to be seen and yeah, the her other friends, I didn't really, I didn't really like her friend circle to be honest um, yeah, like they all have problems of their own like you know domestic violence and all of that's going on and you know their 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 friends are being not only verbally abused by their other halves but beaten and they go you know they they, they go to Gita to um ask for help and ask if they can yeah, ask if she can actually help with killing killing their husbands um yeah then they go to Gita to ask for help and she's like what is going on uh, but her best friend, um, she ends up helping her best friends in ways more than one. Well, not best friend. I think it's another friend. Um, yeah, I'm not really explaining this this properly. Uh, it's it's a story that's not really stuck in my mind. It's I have not much interest. I only tabbed a little bit as and when. There are some comical scenes in here which I've tabbed. Um, but yeah, it's just. I, I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but I'm glad I read it. Let's just put it that. I'm not going to say anything more because I'm not explaining it right and I think I'm just wasting your time. So next, I read this charming little series uh, before the coffee gets cold. Now, I've had my eye on this for a very, 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 very long time. Um, yeah, I'm glad I got my hands on it and got uh, got to read it. It's such a heartwarming, emotional read. Uh, there are um some short stories in here i think there are four but each short story uh yeah the four the lovers husband and wife the sisters and mother and child uh all the characters are interlinked with the cafe so it is a time travel uh book it's very short um time travel uh book and it's about this cafe that's kind of nestled in these this back alley somewhere in Tokyo and you go there and there's this particular seat that a ghost is occupying now when she gets up that's the only time you can sit in your seat and travel back in time to meet whoever you want to meet but you cannot change your present by doing it um which I thought was a really really nice concept and yeah, it was a really nice book. It was, like I said, emotional. Um, and yeah, it's a nice way to start off the series. Then, of course, to follow it, I read uh, Tales from the Cafe. And now this one is more emotional than uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Now, I think I, I also cried. Was it in this one? Or the first one? I think, I think there was this... Uh, there was something about a letter. An old man, um, he has uh, Alzheimer's or dementia, something like that. And, you know, there's this letter that his wife's 
going to give him or something like that but it's really really emotional and yeah I did shed a tear whilst reading that and yeah then um, this one is also very emotional and I just love the whole emotional heartbreak um, interlinked aspect of these books absolutely amazing um, so if you've not read it of course read it um, very, or if you're thinking to read, not to read. Um, okay, so I didn't notice this, uh, but yeah, there is a character list in here. There's like a family tree character list in here, in uh, book number two, and it just tells you who everyone is and how they're all connected and who they're related to. But yeah, nonetheless, really, really, really good. Um, yeah, good book. This next, I read. Uh, Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto, of course it's very very tiny. I can't really remember much about this but I, I know that I didn't really like one story from another because it wasn't really to do with kitchens. Um, so there are two short little novellas in here, novellas, novellas, whatever, uh, in here. Um, and yeah, I think the uh, topics in here are about loss, grief, um, tragedy and love. I think the first story was really nice. I think the second story, I can't really remember what it was about, but it was just not about a kitchen and I, I was thinking when the kitchen aspect would come up because of course this book is titled Kitchen. The first book I understood because that had that aspect to it, you know, that element of uh, kitchen, but um, yeah, the the second second story didn't really uh, didn't do anything for me. But if you've not read it, check it out. It's only a short book anyway, so it won't take you too long to read. So next I read my very first and light novel. Now this is something I picked up ages ago, but I've just been putting it off from reading. But anyway, uh, glad I read it. It is about Mio, who is uh, from a very strong and respected family in terms of the whole I don't know how to describe it there's like some sort of system but it's magic or superpower system I want to say like ability super ability um anyway uh, Mio is someone who hasn't developed her super abilities yet um and she this is very Cinderella-y so if you're if you like Cinderella Perhaps you may just like this. She has a stepmother and her, a stepsister and they treat her horrible. Um, ju it's just the way they, they treat her is terrible. Um, and her dad also doesn't really care much for her because she, she's, she doesn't have any of those super abilities. Um, so yeah, she, she, they then um, flog her off to, they send her off to get married to some guy who everyone says is very stern, very cold, but the unexpected happens and it's just wonderful to see her, you know, grow and be okay with her surroundings and the people that she is with. I think I'm not going to reveal too much, but I did really enjoy this story. If you've not read it, definitely do read it. Of course, My Happy Marriage, the anime is also out for this. Um, I actually did end up watching it on uh, Netflix and yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I also do have the manga for this. So one and a half mangas, um, it sounds so silly. One and a half mangas um, is equivalent to one of these books. Um, and of course, that goes without say, saying the light novel would be more detailed and there's a lot missing in the manga. Um, but it's just nice to see visuals, I guess. Um, am I gonna continue? Um, collecting this yes um i've already got volume two for this so i will be reading it at some point this year uh manga i don't think i will continue to uh collect i've got about four volumes i think it's ongoing um but yeah i won't be continuing with the manga next i read a bullet train this took me forever to read i think i started it in like February and I just finished it like a few months ago. It took me ages. Was it February? I don't know. I can't remember when I started but it took me ages, ages to finish this. I don't know why. Um, so initially I picked it up. I think this was a buddy read. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. 
um, you know, to begin with. It was so fun, it was so good. Um, the characters were really nice, the, the pace it was going was amazing. Um, and then I'm not sure, I think I just got distracted so I put it back down and I never picked it up until recently but I'm, I'm glad. If you haven't read it, please read it. It is such a good, good, good book. Um, I love everything about it. It's just such a fun ride. You've got, you know, lemon, you've got tangerine. Okay, lemon was really annoying. Like, there's a... So I don't know how to say this without moaning or complaining, but there's a fine line when someone can tolerate Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends for 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 an amount of time. You know, at the beginning it was quite funny. It was really funny. But Lemon just goes and on and on and on about Thomas the Tank Engine, Thomas and Friends, whatever you want to call it. And by the end of the time, you know, end of this book, I was like, I do not want to see Thomas anywhere. I do not want to see an ad for Thomas the Tank Engine. I do not want to see anything. I don't want to see a sticker. I don't want to see a book. If I go into the stores, I do not want to see Thomas the Tank Engine. I've had too much, too much of Thomas the Tank Engine in this book. It is rammed full of it with lemon. And you know what? That's something that really bugged me. That irked me. Because you know, you can only you can only handle it for a little amount of time. Then it then even the you know, the, the comical aspects fades away and it's just nothing. But yeah, nonetheless, really, really, really enjoyed it. Really good. Uh, re it's, it's written, re it's translated really good and I just love the story. I did end up watching the film, however, I have not seen the entire film because in the film they've added, they've added another element which is not in the book and I'm always interested in seeing book to screen adaptations. Um, Bullet Train, I thought they would, have, you know, I wish they could have added a few more elements of the book into the, into the movie, but they didn't. Um, I haven't completed the film. I've seen a bit of it. Not too sure if I will finish it or not, but I didn't, I didn't entirely enjoy uh, everything that I did see. Next, I read a non-fiction. It is, I want to die, but I want to eat the bookie. Now, I, I didn't, I can't remember if I did rate this or didn't. Um, this is basically a transcript of her therapy sessions um, with her psychiatrist. Um, and it's very raw. Um, there were some, there were some parts in this book that really resonated with me and I connected with, um, but the rest was a bit too draggy. I don't know, draggy. Um, it was, a, it was an interesting read, um, but of course it is about mental health, um, and, you know, in life when you feel a bit lost, how can you kind of regain your confidence? or come out of this black box that you're in. Um, I don't know why I said black box, but just box in general. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it was an interesting read. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad I read it. Uh, because yeah, some things did ring true to me and I connected with it. And yeah, like I said, it was, it was just a transcript of, um, you know, her therapy sessions. So if you're one, you know, if you're thinking to pick it up and you're expecting more, don't. Um, if you want to read something a little slow paced, true, emotional in some sense, um, yeah, then pick it up. Of course, there is part two on the way this year. Um, it is called, I think, I want to eat the bulky. No, I want to die, but I still want to eat the bulky. I think it's called that. I could be wrong. But there is a part two on the way this year. So next I read A Silent Parade by Kiko Hirishano. This is of course from the uh, Galileo series. This is the last in... No, this is not the last. Ah! Okay, no, this is not the last in the uh, Galileo series because just a week or so ago I found out that there is another book in translation that's going to be released at the end of this year. It is called The, um, it is called the Invisible Helix. And I am really, really excited because I love Galileo. I love his character. I love the relationship he has with uh, Kusanagi. I love their friendship. I just, I just, well, it's it's a friendship or, you know, it's just 
acquaint it's not even it's more than acquaintance isn't it but it's just nice anyway um silent prey i didn't really enjoy it as much as i thought it was really slow this book was really really slow and yeah it was just really slow um it was that slow that i can't really remember much of it apart from a mer two murders i think that happened but they're kind of interlinked and they, they they're linked somehow um but yeah i didn't really enjoy that this was of course my least favorite from the galileo series next i did read a non-fiction book but this is a different type of non-fiction book it's something that i've been meaning to pick up for a while um last year what i did say to myself i will read non-fiction i will read something out of my comfort zone something that i no don't normally reach for now i'm so glad so glad i reached for this book it is your heart is the sea by nikita gill now if you're not a fan of poems and well, if you, even if you're not a fan, I think this book is really nice. It's relatable. Um, it's very emotional. It will break your heart. It will make you sob. Uh, this, yeah, some some poems really made they made me sob. Like I was, I was just yeah, the waterworks weren't stopping. Um, like like yeah, like you can see, I've tabbed. Uh, pages of this book that I've really enjoyed and of course uh, there are so many more tabs on the side um, nonetheless uh, really good um, if you're a fan of poems and you've not read this book please read it if you're not a fan please read it I would still suggest it because I think in here uh, there is a poem that will ring true no matter who you are no matter where you are I think there is a poem for each and every single one of you so if you have not read it please read it please 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 read it next i read oh gosh why is this so heavy i read the ramayan now this um i read during diwali uh, because i did i i did make it my mission that this you know uh, during diwali i would read uh books like this so i did i i'm so glad i did because i've had this on my list for a very very long time um, what can I say? Ramayan is Ramayan. Um, I, I, I tabbed a lot, like you can see, I tabbed loads. Um, there were, there were parts in this book that I had no interest in, like it was so silly, it was so ridiculous. Um, and there were some scenes in this that, you know, when I was small I got told, for example, like, you know ram and lakshman sita they're in the forest and uh sita sees this deer and she tells her husband oh can you can you go get it me because it's so pretty it's a golden deer like we've all heard this story and then um ram goes to get this deer and lakshman stays behind to protect sita and then you know she she hears her husband wail and cry out saying help me help me um but then uh sita this was so ridiculous lakshman knows uh, knows ram so he's like no no that's not my brother that's not my brother that's just something else that's not my brother my brother's fine and sita's just like telling him off like going who are you are you even human do you even love your brother or are you just here because you want me um and she was so rude very rude to him uh, but nonetheless, um, he did what he was told and he went to his brother and so what we got told as kids was uh, Lakshman drew this line around Sita to say, look, this is the area you stay in. You do not step out of that line. It is called the Lakshman Rekha. Now, in fact, that actually didn't happen. He, he drew no lines. He just said, listen, stay here. Don't go out um that's what he did um anyway yeah that line was never mentioned in here i was waiting for it like it'll come now I'll come, but it never came um so yeah that never happened um but in, am i glad I'm, i read it yes i'm glad i read it because it's just so i by the end of it i was so 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 annoyed so annoyed with this book and the way 
that women are treated um it wasn't you know like it's just it made no sense like i feel like after reading such books i just feel like women are doomed from the very get-go no matter no matter who you are no matter where you are it's just it's just a fact because it's seeped into to our history you know um yeah um i'm glad i read it uh did i rate it i can't i can't remember if i rated it or not but there you go next I read something that's very very close to my heart that I absolutely love I will not shut up about it like if you ask me for a recommendation I don't care which genre you're into I will recommend you this book of course it is uh, Kigo Higashane's The Devotional Suspect X I absolutely love this book it's one of my favorites I will take it with me wherever I will go um, I read it for the second time and I, I felt even more wow, even more amazed than the first time I read it. Um, it. I don't know how a book can get better reading the second time. Like, I don't even know if that makes sense. But I'm so, 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 so glad that I read it. So, of course, this uh, story follows uh, Yusuko and Misato and Ishigami and you've got Kusanagi in here. Of course, this is Galileo's um first book in the series the detective series by Kigo Higashano I think I've spoken too much about this uh book in my previous videos but I absolutely love it it's just it's so good and I watched the Bollywood adaptation and it really disappointed me it really really disappointed me um if you want to hear my thoughts on that let me know in the comment section down below I'll make a whole new video um from what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, what was going on, what made sense, what didn't make sense. Anyway, this was of course a reread. Um, did I count it towards my goal? I think so. I'm so confused. Is a reread does does a reread account for like does it go towards a goal? I don't know. Let me know. Then I read the Kamagawa Food Detectives. Now this, when I picked it up, I didn't really. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't reread really the synopsis, um, but I thought it was a detective book, like a crime, like a thriller crime, you know, something like that, but regarding food. Uh, by the way, how amazing is this cover? It's such a good cover. Um, anyway, so, uh, what do I say about this? This really disappointed me. This really disappointed me. I mean, uh, there are, what, six short stories in here following different characters. Some characters are really nice, so basically what you do is there's a detective agency um, and you go to them and you say, hey listen, I ate this dish um, years and years ago and it was amazing and I want to eat it again, but I can't remember how to recreate it or I don't know much about it, but I ate it. This is where I ate it, this is the area I was in, da da da, and then their job is to go out and fish for the ingredients, fish for the dish, recreate it and hand it over. Basically that is it. Um, but I wanted to know more about the cooking process itself and I was so disappointed because this, there wasn't much cooking process mentioned. It was basically, oh yeah, he went to this village or he went to the city, he grabbed the ingredients, he made it and then the client came in and he was like, tuck in. You know, it was... It was basically that and there were so many fat like every time a story starts the client comes into the store the shop and they are seated at a table and he presents them dishes to them the tasting menu or whatever you want to call it and he's just very fancifully telling them like this is this this is this this is this this is this and i'm like when is it gonna stop and it was so like i don't know it was like Michelin style, you know, and I, I did have, I didn't have any interest in that, and that just kind of made it, made it worse. Uh, but it was all right. It was an okay read. I'm glad I read it. Next, I read. <laughs> I don't know why I read this. I read another spicy book, another romance. I read Elsie Silver's Flawless. I think I only read it because it, it's trending on. I don't know. I'm not on TikTok, but I know it's trending. And um, it was an offer on the work, so I grabbed myself a copy. Anyway, 
This is such a weird book. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. There's, okay, so there's a scene in here, which is like this hotel room scene, which is so nice. It was so beautiful. Like, I love that scene. That is like my favorite scene from the book. Um, so yeah, the, uh, so anyway, you've got Retton here, who is a bull rider. Now, after reading this, I actually did YouTube bull riding, and oh my god, it was <laughs> it's so intense. Who does that? Um, anyway, um, yeah, he's a bull rider, and his reputation has been tarnished because he's done something very... something not nice to somebody, and he said something that's very not... He's some, he's, he said something that's, that he should have been a bit more wary about. He shouldn't have said it, but... Uh, someone caught him saying something and it hurt his reputation and his sponsors. Um, so the agency has sent Summer to babysit him and kind of keep tabs on everything he does, make sure he doesn't get into any trouble. Now the thing that I had a problem with was Summer's dad, Kit, Kit, Kit. Um, so her and her dad's relationship was weird like okay i know people who have open relationships with their parents like they can talk to them about whatever but i wouldn't use cursive language with my parents i wouldn't i mean it's not that open of a relationship right i mean there are some limits so that was really niggling at me and i just couldn't i couldn't get my head wrapped around what she was saying what language was being used even the father was using bad language he basically told her to keep, uh, not let Rhett into her pants. Like, <laughs> I don't know which dad says that to a daughter. But anyway, that relationship was messed up. Um, but yeah, Rhett, I didn't really like as much. But I like the fact that, you know, he kind of opened up um, to her and you know kind of warmed up to her which was nice uh this was yeah, it wasn't the best but i'm going to continue with this series because i have a feeling it's like the twisted series i'm pretty sure there's going to be a book in here somewhere which i absolutely will fall head over heels so that's the only reason why i will continue with this series so next i read a midsummer's equation now this took me a very very long time to read i think i started it back in 2022 and only just finished it uh last year so anyway this is book number three in the galilee series by kigo higishano um this is a very different sort of story i want to say so this opened up as uh yukawa he went to this uh, this project meeting, this project to, uh, it's something to do with the ocean. It's, it's, it's a, it's a subject I'm not interested in. And, you know, activists show up, um, and yeah, it's basically about a murder that happens not too far away from the hotel he's staying at, and it's, it's the death of an ex-detective. Um, now this was quite different in terms of we got to see Yukawa in a different um, different light completely. He was very quick to um, say yes, that he would help Kusanagi in a case. Normally he's a little bit reluctant, um, but for this he really jumped at the opportunity. He said, no, you know what, I will help you. I will help you. And he got really invested in it and it was, I liked, I, I always like Higo Higishano's uh, storytelling and layering and the mystery aspect and how everything is created but in here it was again it, you know it was really nice storytelling the this death was connected to a death that happened 16 years ago and they kind of go back in time and check the cases and all files and find out the you know find the people um, and everything like connects to a jigsaw Everything connects like a jigsaw, I should say. And um, yeah, it's just, it was a good read. It was a comfortable read, not a great read. I didn't really feel, you know, it didn't make me go wow, but I'm, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I'm up to date with the Galileo series. My last read for uh, 2023 was Kim Ji-young born 
1982. Uh, now this has been on my list to read for a very very long time and I know there is a movie for this as well which I am yet to watch. Anyway this book, this book just basically follows Kim Ji Young um, when she was a little girl to her adulthood um, you know and um, what how society perceives her and what her what everyone around her expects to be now this really annoyed me this book annoyed me uh it annoyed me a little bit um and it wasn't as interesting as i thought I, it would be because for me it's not nothing new whatever is portrayed in this book it's nothing new to me because being from a south asian you know uh background i it's it's already there this exists in our lives too so for me it wasn't i was like so what you know like i've seen it i've heard it you know um i was expect i don't know why i was expecting something different but nonetheless i'm glad i read it uh if you haven't then definitely do it is about the career system um and how korea expects uh women to be as a whole you know as a whole and yeah at the end like it didn't make sense but uh, at the end everything makes sense of why it's written the way it is written and how it's written i won't i'm not going to spoil it i won't spoil it you gotta read it um but yeah this is the last book that i read last year okay so they were the physical books now i'm going to talk about my kindle uh i've got a little notepad here um sticky note of everything that i read on my kindle last year so I read Rush. So after I read the Twisted series, uh, I wanted more, right? So I'm thinking, oh, what do I read? What do I read? So um, I, I went on to Goodreads and of course they do recommend. So I ended up reading Rush by Maya Banks. Now I rated this a two. So I'm just looking at my Goodreads. Um, so I rated it a two. Uh, I can't really remember the story. Um, I think it was so messed up. This story is messed up. It is a massive age gap story, but that's not even the problem. The problem is with the protagonist, Gabe and Mia. Mia, I think, is one of Gabe's friend's sister. Um, but there was, it was so messed up. There was this whole hotel room scene. Um, it was, it was messed up. Like, I hate, it was cringe. Um, if you've not read Rush, please don't read it. I, I wouldn't suggest it. It's, and if you are planning to read it, check out the trigger warnings. I hated it. I I didn't like it. I mean, I would give it a one, but there were certain scenes that were nice. Well, I can't remember much of the story, but I'm pretty sure there were because I gave it two. Um, then I read Throttle by Lauren Asher. Now this I rated a three because it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good. It was about um, you know a, a Formula One racer who falls in love with his friend's sister. I think. Um, and yeah, they just kind of hit it off and um, I remember liking the female lead in this. I remember liking her. She was nice. Um, but yeah, that was Throttle by Lauren Asher. Then I read Distance by Luna Mason. I don't know why I read, I don't know why I read such books, but I was just curious. You know, I wanted more in the genre. So I thought, you know what, let me just read it. So I read Distance. It was about this boxer? The pub boxer, um, I, can't, I can't remember much, uh, boxer um, who falls in love with this girl and I think that's it, I can't remember much. Um, then I read Silent Bride, so I, I rated this for, it was predictable. I think I read too, I think sometimes you know when a person reads too much thriller or crime, mystery, whatever, you kind of, your mind works in mysterious ways, you always are, you're always guessing. You're always guessing. So um, The Silent Bride was nice. Um, it wasn't that bad. Uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. Um, it's not bad. It's by Shalini Boland. Um, yeah, like I said, I gave it four stars. Not bad. Um, then I read a non-fiction. I gave this a three. It is A Rental Person Who Does Nothing um, by Shoji Morimoto. Now, I read it purely because I was so intrigued. So this man, he basically does nothing, but he still makes money. 
I don't know. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> so basically, if you're, I think this this doesn't connect with us. Well, me, because this wouldn't work here. But in Japan, it it works. Um, so anyway, you hire him. So you pay his travel expenses. You pay his food, and you take him. You, for example, if you I don't know are anxious and want to go out for dinner. But don't want to bother anybody else. You would message Shoji Morimoto, and basically he would just rock up. You pay for his food, you pay for his travel, and he won't talk as much. So he will only answer and say basic things. He won't go deep into conversation because that's doing something. Um, I I gave it a three because I personally wanted to know more about his personal life more than just his. Doing nothing aspect. I just wanted to know more, but nonetheless, it was a really fascinating read. Um, if you haven't read it, I would suggest you read it. Uh, next, I read Lucy Clark's *The Hike*. Now, this was a really good story. I really liked it. It was. I felt like I was being transported to like a hike um, from the comfort of my own home. Like it was so. It was so great. Um, the twist was good. Um, but there was the only reason why I didn't give it four. F uh, I think I gave it four point five actually. Did I? Um, anyway, uh, so basically, there's this character who's a rock star in this, and I didn't like her character. I didn't like it at all. Um, I couldn't connect with that character, so I didn't like. I think I I I normally rate something down when I can't connect with something or someone in the book so I couldn't connect with her but nonetheless the story was good the friendship angle was really nice I love the friendship of them that they had um I love I like the bravery of all of them so all these friends they meet up once a year and they go on vacation to do something just to kind of like reconnect and um so one ew, so that year it was down to that friend and she said she wants to go on a hike so they all went on a hike um, but yeah like I said that rockstar character I can't remember her name uh, but I didn't like her character but the story was really good if you want to be transported to Norway read it then I read uh, no one saw a thing now this was quite an interesting read this was by uh, Andrea Mara now this was I believe about a child disappearing um, so basically the mum is with her kids and they're getting onto the tube? Metro? I'm not sure. Um, and um, her kids get in but she fails to get in and she's kind of going oh you know next stop get off and when she reaches the next stop her kid one of her child is not there. Um, well yeah one, one of her daughters is not there and um, yeah then it's just about trying to find her and then from there you get, you know, you get, tra it's like, it's not flashback, but you do find out exactly who's involved and you get to meet their friends. And yeah, it's not a bad read. I, I rated this for, um, so yeah, if you have not read it, definitely do check it out. And with that, that is everything that I read in 2023. Is there something that you've read that I did also in 2023? If you did. Uh, get in touch, let me know, comment in the section down below. Um, also, if you have not read any of these and are planning to, also do let me know. And don't forget, you can of course um, catch up with all my going ons, as in in terms of reading, on my social. I will pop the link, uh, well my handle, in the description box down below. Don't forget to check that out. And with that, that's it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching. You've been absolutely amazing. Right then, until uh, the next video, take care and hey, happy reading. Mm -hmm.